Well, are we headed for an economic upheaval the likes of which we haven't seen for decades? Well, the Biden administration wants you to believe, of course, the economy is doing great. It's on the upswing, but the numbers don't lie. They're telling a different story. This week, we learn that some of the largest companies in America are laying off thousands of people, and especially in a sector that normally is swimming in money and doing very, very well. The tech sector, we're seeing Apple, Amazon, Google, and more laying off thousands of people, all eyes on a 2024 recession. Of course, this is the time period we were most worried about. After Christmas, after those temporary hires had all left those jobs, we were talking about January and February. Experts were predicting this recession hitting right around this time. Are they correct? This could explain also why gold prices are surging to all-time highs. Uranium prices are surging to all-time highs. So commodities and precious metals Certainly something that are surging right now. And someone who knows all about that and has been watching this economic conditions very, very closely is the founder of Lear Capital, good friend of the show, Kevin Demerit. We wanted to bring on to dive into this recessionary period we might be heading into. Well, I'll just ask you, Kevin. I don't want to put words in your mouth. You look at this data every day. Uh, there seems to be a lot more trouble on the horizon for 2024. I'm always a glass half full kind of guy. I don't want a recession. I want good times ahead. I don't want any of my, you know, m- any of my investments to be hurt in any kind of way. And I want my family to be protected. But what are you seeing right now in terms of broader market conditions? Well, Clayton, we're, we're just literally drowning in a record $34 trillion in government debt with interest payments now alone standing at a trillion dollars a year and expected to be 1.5 trillion in the next 10 years. Now, that number does not include the trillion, trillion and a half dollars that the government's going to overspend anyway. So we're probably looking at two and a half to three trillion dollar deficits for the next five or six years. Personal debt is hitting the roof with credit card debt at all time highs. Corporate bankruptcies have soared up 23 percent. You know, really, the debt is slowly killing the economy and really could take people's savings and retirement accounts with it, just like we saw in 2008. It's going to be the same type of recession, just different uh, as far as which assets going to you know, crash. We have real estate probably pulling back because of the higher interest rates, but you just have the stock market absolutely uh, skyrocketed. And it took seven years to get back to even from that 2008 recession. I think you're going to see some of the same just because of the enormous amount of debt that has been created on the consumer side, uh, corporate side and government side. Well, you brought up a couple of really interesting points. And last night or, or earlier this week on the show, I forget which day I mentioned it, uh, we, I was specifically talking about the commercial real estate side. And this bubble, holy smokes. I mean, I'm looking at the data, on, not on residential real estate, which is where I'm a big investor, right. like pe- where people have to live, right? That's to me, that is a totally different animal than what's happening in office space stuff right now. Offices closing, data showing 30% of these offices are closing. If big companies now are just like handing over the keys and defaulting on their mortgages on these office spaces. And my son was even asking me this morning at breakfast, he said, Daddy, what's happening with, I don't understand. Can you explain this to me in office spaces? What's what's going on here? Because I saw a commercial during one of the NFL games to buy warehouse space. I said, what in the world am I watching here? During an NFL game, there's an advertiser where you can buy warehouse space because they're converting offices into warehouses because we need so many Amazon distribution center boxes and things getting sent to people's front doors. So can you talk about the commercial real estate mess right now? I mean, this is a disaster. Well, it really is a disaster. You know, look, the values are low, so they go back to the banks when their loans are due and the banks aren't willing to lend them the money uh, back at the same values that they had three, four or five years ago. My building's a perfect example. We're 22% vacancy rate here. 22%. You know, they, they model things out at 3%, 7%, 5%, things like that. Not 22%. The bank looks at it and says, hey, look, I can't make a loan when your building is 20% vacant. So if you look across California, I don't know about a lot of other places in the country, but you look in California, you look in New York, you look at some of the larger cities out there. It's a huge problem, and when those loans come due, how are they going to get the financing to continue the, with a piece of property? They have to give it up, right? I mean, they either have to come up with the money or give it up, and it's kind of hard to come up with hundreds of millions of dollars for some of these large buildings. You know, really what it feels like to me, uh, Clayton, it feels like the economy after, the, after Christmas here is 
the cartoon while where uh, you know the road runner and wily e. coyote are chasing each other and wily e. coyote runs off the cliff and he's just for that instant he's hanging there and then he puts up his sign bye bye and it and he falls you know oh. we're kind of hanging off of the cliff right now waiting for the bye bye sign when the recession hits that's that's exactly what it feels like oh, yeah beep beep here we go like this is about to happen yeah. and you know, this is why I, I, you know, I do these segments. I want people to protect themselves. I mean, and we'll talk more about that in a moment, but I, I want people to protect their families. And so when you see people that have got money invested in commercial real estate or office buildings, because they were told a couple of years ago that that was a smart play. You saw all these developments yeah. popping up in Brooklyn and, you know, outside of New York City and all these office spaces. And, I, you know, it's the return to the office space. We're not going back to Mad Men era living anymore. No, people are not going back to the offices in this way. And this is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. You know, everybody's talking about, is there going to be a recession? Is there not going to be a recession? It makes absolutely no sense if you look at the data. People literally have to wake up on this one because since the 1970s, an inverted yield curve, which is basically for everybody that doesn't know, it means the short end of the curve, the, the interest on the, the shorter notes, three, six, nine months, one year notes are higher than the long term notes, which makes no sense. If you want to invest for 10 years, you would think you would get a higher interest rate. In this case, in this inversion, the longer end of the, the yield, the 10 year note is trading for less than the current six month, nine month, one year yield, okay? So if you look at that since the 1970s, an inverted yield curve that has stayed inverted for six months has predicted a recession, not 80% of the time or 90% of the time, 100% of the time. We have had an inverted yield curve for 11 months. So over the past five decades, 12 months is the average between the inverted yield curve and the beginning of a recession. We're at month 11. So I'm not thinking that I'm trying to figure out if there's going to be a recession. I'm trying to figure out how bad the recession is going to be because we've never seen this kind of debt in the credit card space, even in 2008. We've not seen this kind of government type debt. We've not seen one trillion in interest payments on government debt. We've not seen any of this before, and it usually catches up to you. Oh, that's very smart. That's such a great point. Such a great point. It's not whether or not we're in a recession or heading to a recession. It's how bad it's going to be. And to your point right. about to yep. your point about credit card debt. I mean, I just got this report today on the millennial homebuyer report. Um, new research out shows that millennials who are ten thousand dollars in debt, fifty seven percent, is double the percentage, twenty five percent, who have ten thousand dollars in savings. So the one in four millennials have less than ten thousand dollars in savings, and one in eight have fewer than that has less than one thousand dollars in savings. They have basically have nothing saved, and they're swimming in debt. This is the state of young people in the United States right now. Forget trying to even buy a home. Oh yes, the government understands this. You know, New York and some of the other states are already trying to regulate these uh, you know, buy now, pay later type situations because they're looking back and saying, this is impossible. They can't pay what they've purchased with these buy now, pay later type situations. So the government sees what's happening here. They've already bailed out student loans and, and, and you know, some of the other things. They, they can't keep bailing everybody. You don't become a wealthy nation by printing up more and more and more debt. You become a wealthy nation by saving and balancing a budget and so on and so forth. The whole thing is crazy, Clayton. This is one of the craziest times that I've ever seen. You have government at, at record amounts of debt. You have the personal uh, uh, debt at absolute record highs. You know, at least in 2002, you could kind of look at, uh, you know, the dot com and say, OK, these business plans are on the back of a napkin is probably not going to work. In 2008, when you had, you know, people purchasing three and four ho homes at a time with no money down, you can kind of see those things coming. This you have the government on the personal side, commercial real estate, businesses uh, going bankrupt. This is one of the most concerning times that I have seen in the past 20 years of doing this. And when we look at precious metals, of course, we talk about gold, we talk about silver. Natalie and I are big investors in, in both of those precious metals and real estate, of course. Um, we just saw over the past few weeks 
we saw gold hitting record high. Now, I think about six months ago, you were on the show and you said you thought we were going to see gold over $2,000 an ounce. You were right about that. It is now over $2,000 troy ounce. Um, but you have a new report out, which you just sent me before the show, uh, $3,200 an ounce for gold. And, and I guess our viewers, if you, you guys made this available for our viewers, if they want to go and download this, um, we have a, where can people find this by the way, so they could read along with us. Yeah. So if they uh, are, are interested, they can give us a phone call at 1-800-613-3557, or they can go to learredacted.com and we will send them a report free of charge. So there's going to be we don't charge for the report. We're we're going to do that. And I think I told you at the beginning of this, I always like to do something special on your program. It's just great listeners and very educational. So we're going to give away um, some mercury dimes to people. I bought a bag of mercury dimes. They were minted between 1916 Whoa. and 1945. We're going to go ahead and give the first 200 callers that want the information in the special report. We'll also uh, give them you know a mercury dime. Help them get started in the precious metals market. But that's cool. Clayton, in the special report, uh, what we do at the beginning of every year is predict the price of gold. And so we did this year for 2024. We do it at the beginning of every, almost every year. I don't have a crystal ball, but when you read the report, we use the correlation of U.S. debt to the gold price. Why? Because that correlation stands at 92% since the early 1970s when they took us. Uh, off the gold standard, and then you could uh, legally own gold again. So based on the current U.S. Defi deficit projections and where the gold price stands, the price of gold should be $3,200 an ounce over the next 24 months. Again, I don't have a crystal ball, but I don't need one. If you just look at the report and look at the correlation of U.S. debt and gold, it's a highly correlated, 92% correlation. So the gold price rises as a, with the deficit over time. If you go back to 2002, the gold price was $260 an ounce. The U.S. deficit was $6.5 trillion. Last year, the debt broke $33 trillion. The gold price broke over $2,000 an ounce. 400% increase in debt, 700% increase in gold. So you typically see the gold price move at 1.6 times whatever the deficit is increasing. You look at it since the 1970s, it's held up to a 92% correlation. I don't need a crystal ball. I'm not smart enough to get into the stock market and learn all about all the different stocks and mutual funds and so on and so forth. I just concentrate on one thing. That's the correlation. So it's easy to predict where the price of gold is. And 3,200 is where it came up. We haven't been wrong too much. That's where I think it's going. And I think people are going to um, wake up to the fact that the central banks themselves, are buying record amounts of gold for the second year in a row. 2023, uh, they bought a quarter of the uh, entire mining supply. 2002, they bought the a quarter of the complete mining supply. You'd have to go all the way back to 1967 to see when they did that before, and gold was up 900% when they started. They're the biggest buyers of gold. They have the most money of any institution out there. They are not stopping. They're increasing their buying because they understand that they continue to print more paper dollars that make our paper dollars that you and I hold worth less, and there's only so much gold. So you put an increased demand on a fixed supply, the gold price is going up because of all the dollars out there. They get it. It's a no-brainer, and that's why I believe that uh, with this deficit and where the price of gold is going to go, people will be happy that they diversified some portion of their portfolio over before this recession hits. Yeah, I mean, that's what I always say. Like, if you've got a, a few thousand dollars sitting in U.S. dollars right now in your savings account, you know, like Natalie and I have done, we've transferred that over to gold and silver because I don't want, when you have a U.S. dollar sitting in a savings account, it's losing value every day thanks to inflation and thanks to what the Biden administration has done, done, uh, has done here. It's unbelievable. And to your point about the U.S. debt, we just saw in three months time, the Biden administration added another trillion dollars to our national debt. We've got the big debt cl clock up here on our screen during our show. And we show it goes, it went from 33 trillion to 34 trillion. And that sped up three month period that happened. So there's no slowing down to the amount of debt that the United States government is piling on. Yeah, they're, they're look, you, you add a trillion dollars in just interest. And then you look at what they're projecting, which is a trillion and a half dollars. 
And then you think about what you just said. They added a trillion dollars in three months. They haven't been right on a budget at, at any time I can remember. I mean, the Clinton administration got it right for about one year, and then it went completely haywire again. So the odds that their bet or their forecast of one and a half trillion dollars plus the one and a half trillion dollars in interest is going to be two and a half trillion dollars this year? Impossible. It's going to be three to three and a half trillion dollars by the time we get done. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy to me. I'm just mind boggling. I don't know how anybody, my son, again, my son is fascinated about this lately. So he walks up here into our studio and he sees the national debt clock on the wall. And he said, wait a minute, that's how much the United States is in debt. I mean, if you ran a business like that, it, you would be out of business, right? That's impossible. But the United States government continues to flow with this. Um, Kevin, well, let's throw that 800 number back up here on the screen again. So if people call you, you've got these mercury dimes uh, the first, you said 200 people uh, who get this free report will also get a free uh, free Mercury Dime, right? Yeah, as many people as want can call in and get, uh, you know, the debt reports, a 2024 debt reports, debt and $3,200 gold. So you can go through the correlations that I was talking about. It, it talks about how to protect a portion of your assets in, in precious metals. So there's a gold investor's guide in there also. And then, yes, we have 200 Mercury Dimes. We're going to place a Mercury Dime in the first 200 people that call will go ahead and add that in. And they can call us at 1-800-613-3557 or go to learredacted.com. Just fill out the information there and uh, we'll get it out that way as well. Awesome. Well, thank you, my friend. I really appreciate it. We'll keep an eye on what's happening here with uh, you know massive, staggering 400% rise in debt, 700% though for gold, which is great. So there you go. I mean, we'll keep an eye on what's happening here and uh, what happens with these wars in the Middle East at the same time. Kevin, great to see you as always. We appreciate you joining us from uh, sunny California out there. Stay safe. Yeah. Thanks, Clayton. <laughs> 